Field monitors, what are they and do you need one? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tom Fricker and today we are talking field monitors. When getting into photography, you're bombarded with a choice of different accessories which all promise to deliver game-changing improvements to your new hobby or profession. They all state that they'll improve your pictures or video, improve your workflow and ultimately give you a better end product, but choosing what to purchase next can be a really frustrating process. Whether they'll actually deliver what they promise really depends on what you're looking to achieve and where you are in your camera journey. In today's video, we're going to take a look at field monitors. We're going to see what use cases they fulfill and whether or not they are actually a sound investment and ultimately, should you consider buying one. But first, let's go through what a field monitor is, what it does and what kinds are available. Sometimes called field monitors, LCD monitors, camera monitors, a monitor is ultimately a screen which can be attached to your camera to give you a view of exactly what you would see through the viewfinder or on a screen on the back of your camera. They can be mounted on top of your camera or on a separate stand and plug into the HDMI port of your camera to ultimately show you an image of what the camera is seeing. They come in a variety of different sizes. You can get five inch and seven inch monitors. They're probably the most common, but you can also get 10 inch and larger. And quality wise, you can get HD, which is relatively standard, but also 4K monitors. On the more expensive monitors, you can also install LUTs or lookup tables so you can get a good idea of what the raw image will look like once it's been processed. Monitors can be purchased for as little as £80, about the same in US dollars for the simple models, and go up to over £3,500 for the type of thing you'd find on a Hollywood film set. As well as simple field monitors, you can also purchase external recording devices, such as the Atomos Ninja series. These act as a monitor, but will also capture higher quality video from your camera. These are often able to record to levels of quality which are beyond that native to most cameras and also offer you a level of consistency. If you are using numerous cameras, maybe from different brands, using the same recording device ultimately means you will get all of your footage in the same format and also to the same level of quality. For the purposes of this video, let's just focus on the straightforward monitors. The use cases for a monitor really depend on what you use your camera for. Do you use it just for photography or do you also use it for videography? I think it's fair to say that if you use your camera to record video, then the argument for actually buying a monitor is increased. Let's break down the thought process of purchasing a monitor into photography versus videography. Let's take a look at the use cases of a monitor for photography. These days, most cameras come with a high quality screen and mirrorless cameras actually provide you with an electronic viewfinder. Some camera screens can actually be flipped to face forward so you can see them when you're in front of the camera and ultimately a screen is generally always going to be available to the photographer. Generally in photography you're going to find yourself behind the camera so the screen and the viewfinder will normally be available to you. A monitor might provide you with a bigger screen or even one of a better quality but in my opinion I don't see a monitor really making a material difference to your photography. A couple of cases where I've actually found the monitor useful for photography have really revolved around situations where I've had to be in front of the camera and nobody else is around to take photographs for me. One example was my son's birthday, which occurred during the COVID-19 lockdown. I wanted to get some nice photographs of the day to capture it and remember it, but I needed to be in the pictures along with my family. There was nobody else around to take photographs for me. So in that situation, the monitor came in really useful because I could make sure everything looked like I wanted it to and use a remote shutter release to actually take the photographs. If you are running a social media camera, campaign or account where you're having to be both in front of the camera and the photographer, maybe something clothing or makeup themed, and I can really see the use cases of a monitor beginning to stack up. That's clearly not what I'm going for, but I do use my monitor for photography when I'm taking thumbnail photos for the videos that go on this channel. In that situation, I am the model and photographer. If you're really only interested in photography and you don't take any video at all and you don't really fit one of the aforementioned use cases where you're in front of the camera a lot, then I don't see a monitor as being a critical investment for you. The screen and the viewfinder on your camera will do you fine. It's really when we start looking at the applications of a monitor for recording video that we can really see how valuable they can be. If you're creating content where you'll constantly be in shot, such as YouTube videos or vlogging, 
unless you're lucky enough to have a camera where the screen can be flipped to face forwards or have a separate camera operator, then you really can start to see what an aid a monitor can be. A monitor will give you a clear view of what is being recorded. You can make sure that everything is in frame correctly. You can make sure that your exposure settings are right and that everything looks exactly as you want whilst you're recording a video. However, I think a monitor is actually something that's really useful to those that are new to recording video content, because not only does it show you the picture that the camera can see, but it also shows you the settings that the camera has. So for instance, you can see the exposure settings and whether or not the camera is actually recording. A good example of this is the first ever video I recorded for this channel. I thought I'd set everything up correctly and turned it all on, but I didn't realize I hadn't actually turned on the microphone that was plugged into the camera. That meant that the camera wasn't actually picking up any sound at all, and when I sat down to edit the video, I had nothing natively to synchronize my lavalier microphone recordings with, so I had to manually synchronize all of the voice and sound with the picture, which was an absolute nightmare. If I'd been able to see the screen, I would have actually seen that the two little bars that indicate the volume that's being picked up by the camera were absolutely flat. It was picking up nothing, but I couldn't see the screen. Had I had a monitor at that point in time, then I could have seen those bars, I'd have realized that nothing was being picked up volume wise and therefore could have rectified the situation before I recorded a gigantic segment of the video. So as you can see, I actually think a monitor is a really useful tool if you're creating video content and especially if it's something you're new to. So should you go and spend thousands of pounds on a Hollywood style monitor? Well, that really depends on what stage of your creation career you're at and what kind of disposable income you have. If you're just starting out, as I am, then I'd really look at a simple model of monitor and I'd really take a look at the used market. There are lots of good bargains to be had on the like of eBay. If you're not so budget constrained or are more progressed in your video career, then of course go for something better quality. When I wanted to buy a monitor, I did a lot of research on YouTube. There are tons of videos out there giving ideas of good budget monitors and I came across this Viltrox monitor, the Viltrox DC50. These can be bought for about £75 new, about the same in US dollars, but I actually went on eBay and found an absolute bargain for £40, which came with the monitor and all of the accessories. It was in mint condition and came with a sun hood, additional batteries, a lead and a charger, everything I needed to get going. It's made a massive difference to my video recording process. It's made it much faster and also I no longer have to keep on walking around to the back of the camera to check that everything's set up properly and turned on. Using a monitor comes with its own challenges. It takes a bit of getting used to. It's very easy whilst you're sitting down and recording video to keep glancing up at the monitor and seeing what's going on. It can catch your eye, but I think that really will go away with some experience. One other challenge is that when the monitor is plugged in, it actually turns off the screen and viewfinder on your camera. So if you actually need to change some settings, it can be a bit difficult and you have to kind of reach around the camera and remember where the buttons are to try and press the right thing to change the setting you want. But none of these challenges are insurmountable and the values a monitor will add to your video creation process far outweigh any of these. So in summary, if you're a video creator and you're going to spend a lot of time in front of the camera, then I really do think a monitor is something that will benefit your creation process. They're a great tool for making sure that everything is exactly as you want and that everything is switched on. So I'd really recommend one in this situation. You just need to put some thought into how much you want to spend and what level of monitor you really need. However, if your main focus is photography, then the use cases for a monitor really are reduced. It's likely you'll spend much more of your time behind the camera and the quality of the screens and the viewfinders in modern cameras these days is excellent. In that situation, I really would question whether or not a monitor is something you really want to spend your money on. There are many other accessories out there which will probably give you much better improvements and much greater use if you're focused on photography. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. And until next time, have a great day.